Okay, you can hear me, right? Hey, thank you for the computer voice for recording the meeting. Okay, this is. I think this is better anyway. Okay, so... Um, let's, let's talk about Zoom recording our meeting. Maybe you could ask for that under Freedom of Information. Well, uh, I, I press record, to be fair, so... <laughs> Um, so wh- what what were we talking about there before we got cut off? Oh man, Cons- um, what were we about to talk about? It was like okay, so like March, April, May last year. It was it was a weird it was a weird time because like the people who had who had woken up to the scam were they were just they were very it was just very hard to kind of find people who who were on your wavelength. But, uh, but you because you've been like researching this for a long time. Um, you were uh, well and i and i i had researched it before in the past too it's like we we there was like a few people online who were kind of messaging each other going like i think we know what's going on and so it's gonna yeah. it's kind of very weird and clandestine isn't it yes um like i say you, you most people never have the time to to investigate anything like this and that's kind of like I said, it's the uh, when we're talking about the etymology of words. So when I was at school, when you do spelling, like, well, the word business is spelled busyness, right? I always busyness. had, I always wondered what the I is for. You don't pronounce that letter, busyness. So if you keep somebody in busyness, they don't have time to think about anything. Um, and the the example I give people, ironically, is is, is uh, there's a lot of stuff in music and songs that 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 date very well because they they anchor stuff in time okay so um the 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 classic example is is london calling by the clash Mm -hmm. because the first line of the chorus in 1979 is the ice age is coming okay that's the first line of the chorus is the ice age is coming the sun's zooming in and the reason for that was that's what science was telling governments at the time the ice age is coming Right. That was the scientific consensus about the climate. Was the ice age was coming? Right. There's whole articles about it. I think Thatcher talked about. It, right. So you the get 80s. these things that that date stuff. 1979, London calling. Right, right. The ice age is coming. The sun's zooming in. Meltdown expected. The wheat is going to Engines stuck on him, but I have no fear because London is drowning. Like I say, you find things in songs that, that date quite well because it, it you can say, well, no, somebody thought this, you know, and Joe Strummer was no schmuck. So, so, no schmuck. so what's, your, what what's, your, what's your point about the Ice Ages coming? What, what, what was your point there? Um, well, at the time, that was the, that was the scientific consensus and <laughs> until it, the world got a little bit warmer in the it, 80s, and then they decided, oh, let's, let's call it man-made global warming and we can... T- Tax everybody. So, so do you think there is an ice age coming? In, in theory, if you believe the history of the world as it's been told, yes. If you look back, people have looked at all the records. If you look at the cyclical nature of all of the weather events, we are overdue an ice age. You know, now that may or may not be true because you you don't know what to trust anymore from any historical narrative, mm. yeah, you really don't know what to trust, right? Mm. I mean, a good example is people keep going on in America about, you know, indigenous people and who discovered it and who was there and whatever, but it's, it's, it's been known for quite a while now that, you know, that the um, Scandinavian people were, the Vikings were there a thousand years ago. You know? the, Ro- the Romans were there 2000 years ago. So Christopher Columbus did not discover Shit. He just knew where he was going and there was a lot of gold there. And let's go and get this stuff, boys. These guys are idiots. You know? So the, the history books are written by the mainstream version all the time, do you think? Well, yeah, Napoleon said it. History is written by the winners. You know? Right. Um, so, you know, it's now believed that, that um, the original Egypt is really in America. It's the Grand Canyon. That's the problem. This land, the original, the original Egypt. promised land. That's the theory. Yeah, maybe actually in the Grand Canyon. 
somebody discovered um, a set of tombs, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, I think. And or actually, no, maybe it's 100 years ago with um, sarcophaguses and eight foot skeletons and loads of gold. And then the Smithsonian came in and shut it up, took away the bones and uh, you're not allowed to go there anymore. You know, so there's plenty of places where you can't go, because if you do go there, you might figure out that something's amiss with what you've been told about the world. You know? And, and you, with, with the pyramids in Egypt, how do you think they were built? Um, oh, nobody really knows that, do they? I don't know. There are 300 pyramids in China. That always freaks people out. You can go online and have a look. Google pyramids in China, and one of them is the same size as the pyramid at Giza. They discovered the outlines of a huge 80 by 50 meter chamber inside the mound. Surrounded by a stone wall nearly 150 meters long and 125 meters wide. They also discovered high concentrations of mercury in the surrounding soil. A huge burial chamber and high concentrations of mercury hint that tales of underground rivers and seas of mercury and stories of sacrificed concubines might be true. But there's another incredible story about this tomb. A story that's created a mystery. A mystery that remains unsolved to this day. Ancient records say that when the first emperor's tomb was finished, it was 115 meters high twice as tall as it is today. At that height, its base would have been 500 meters on each side, making the tomb five times bigger than it is today, and four times bigger than Egypt's Great Pyramid. And the Pyramid at Giza is the same size as the one at Teotihuacan in Mexico. You know? But these cultures are not connected in any way. So how do you how do you think they're connected? No, they are. That's the joke. Right, but how are you um, how are you saying they, they are, are connected? connected? Because it's it's fairly clear from a lot of uh, construction methods around the world that are repeated that at some point there was a worldwide uh, civilization that were all using the same techniques, you know, or different building styles. Um, constructions of doors where they got triplicates of doors and if you go and look you can find i should send you some images i've got some images somewhere where you go around the world and, it, and it's the, the 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 same techniques crop up everywhere you know if you go to china they've they've got ruins of buildings with what you would call roman columns well, they call it greco romana but that style is everywhere mm -hmm. everywhere uh, so so what you're saying there's like loads of amazing buildings you know they found a guy I found a guy found a pyramid um, off of the Azores under the ocean. He was he was a professional fisherman. He used to take people out on rich people out on trips, and they map things. And he found a pyramid. He found a city under the sea. You know? There's one off this coast of Cuba as well. There's a city a thousand feet underwater with a pyramid in it. How old is that? So I'm going to say, just to um, go off on what, let's go off on the tangent of that. Uh the uh pyramids mm -hmm. there so you're saying that uh, around that time there was a worldwide um uh, i don't i don't know what word you'd call it but uh, yeah there it's very it's very clear that there have been a several several civilizations sorry that's my facebook there's been we're told a, a narrative that civilization is this upward curve right from the sumerians six thousand years ago these mm -hmm. guys suddenly appear they invent all these things, law, writing, Ooh. courts, all these different, blah, 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 all these things suddenly appear, and then mm -hmm. civilization goes on this curve. But it's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. If you go to uh, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, which was discovered a few years ago, it's a set of stone circles that have been dated to 13,000 BC, or 13,000 years ago, sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that puts them 7,000 years ahead of the pyramids. And you think people were sitting around for 7,000 years doing nothing? So nobody knows how old the pyramids really are or how old the Sphinx is. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll give you a story that, oh, the Egyptians built it and we did this and we didn't. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. If you go around and start looking at the art that's still there, 
you'll find, you know, you'll find Buddhas in different countries and different deities that are the same, or you'll find the flood myth exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every culture's got a flood myth. And what, what, so what, clearly there was one at some point. And why, why the connection? As in you like, know, with the civilizations. So why 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 are the um, these uh, same uh, myths coming up in, in different parts of the the world? That's because that adventure that something of that nature actually happened. You know, there's geological evidence for that too. You know, for what a Buddha? No, for a, no for a flood, worldwide flood. Right. Okay. Some description now whether what that is and when who knows exactly you know. The official narrative is 11,000 BC, a meteorite, an asteroid came down and melted the ice cap that was over America. That's the theory, right? And that destroys all the larger mammals that existed. And then we end up here. Or, you know, you go back 65 million years, supposedly, to when that large asteroid destroyed all the dinosaurs. You know? hmm. There's a lot to it. You'd have to watch a lot of stuff to start to see a picture in there, you know? Yeah. But it's, uh... it, 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 there's certain elements to, when they talk about stuff in history there's certain elements that don't they don't add up correctly um a, a good example might be easter island with the famous statues the heads you know you always see the head the stone head and the shoulders mm -hmm. but they dug down mm -hmm. once and these statues go further down much they go like 30 feet down they've got arms and belts and everything so these statues were built to be seen from at least the torso up but something happened and and 30 feet of soil or mud came in and covered these statues up. And they said, what was that? You know? They never talk about that. The official narrative is this was built by a group of people about 800 years ago, and they were so stupid, they carved all of these stones, and they cut down every tree on the island in order to transport the stones, and then they died of starvation. That's the story. And you're like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's cut down all the trees. <laughs> um, you see so, what I mean? You get you, you, when you get when you get history in school, then all these little narratives, there's nothing there. There's no, I don't know what you remember at school about when you were taught history. When I was taught, it was it was garbage. It was, mm. it was boring. It was meant to be boring. Mm. You know, they don't talk about anything. They don't talk about anything. You know, and it's only now that people are starting to really dig and find the real narratives of a whole load of things. Yeah. So, do, do you think and then all the problem? I was just saying, do, do you think uh, all these uh, like different versions of history have been covered up because it's been covered up by this uh, this cult, or is it is it more, a lot more complicated than that? I th well, they do say that whoever controls the past controls the future. So if you've written the history, then you can you can tell people that's your history, and then you can direct them using that. Yeah. So you're seeing that with with this thing in America of BLM and reparations and slavery, but but you know the slave trade was a trade, you know, it, and it started in Africa and the Middle East. You know, it was around for thousands of years. It was a common it was a common practice everywhere. You know. But you're not told that story. No one's told that story. I mean, I discovered about four years ago from somebody that Irish people were sold as slaves in America. But nobody knows that. Did you know that? We know all too well of the atrocities of the African slave trade. But are we talking about the African slave trade? King James II and Charles I also led a continued effort to enslave the Irish. Britain's famed Oliver Cromwell furthered this practice of dehumanizing one's next door neighbor. The Irish slave trade began when James II sold 30,000 Irish prisoners as slaves to the New World. Irish people were sold as slaves in America. Yep. Right. Uh, no. That, that that explains why when people came here in the 50s in the in the windows in London, the famous guest house window or the lodgings, it would say no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, because the Irish were considered the same as black people. They were ex-slaves. 
they're on the same level. Makes more sense when you see it that way, you know. So, but it was very, and sorry, so this is the way they drive people out of different lands. So, like when they wanted to, when they wanted to populate Australia, nobody wanted to go there because it was a, it was a, it, that was you were ending your life here if you went to Australia, right? Three hundred years ago, whenever it was, to emigrate to Australia was like what six, seven weeks on a boat, maybe more actually. Uh -huh. yeah? So you go all that distance to get there. You're probably never coming back. When they, wanted, when they wanted to colonize somewhere and people didn't want to go, they had to figure out ways to get them there. So with Australia, what they did here was they made people poor and then they made a law that if you got caught stealing, for example, the punishment was you and your family would be sent there to serve the sentence. So they, that's why, you know, Australia is this colony that was founded on the criminals. That's the theory. But you you banish people. You got it in in Scotland. They had the Highland clearances. They got they used people there to to populate places in Canada. That's why it's called Nova Scotia. Yeah, or a lot of Irish people from the famine, potato famine, went over and went to New York. Yeah. Right. Okay. And now people are coming over from Calais, from Africa and the Middle East because they're being forced out. Regard of what you think about the issue there's a migration happening mm -hmm. and what, yeah. why do they why do they want that migration happening in uh, right now well the main reason is that european birth rates are dropping through the floor you know you haven't got any kids have you and i haven't got any kids no and there's plenty of people i know who don't and so when you have a falling birth rate then you can't keep the economy going because you need four or five young people to pay enough tax to maintain the older people that have retired. But I thought, I thought they're trying to cut the, kill us all off anyway. Yeah. yeah I'll save even more money. There was an article, I believe in the telegraph about that. Yeah, but I don't, I, do, I don't, I don't news article the government. Did you see that one where they saved six, like 600 million pounds in uh, pensions? Hang on they're all dead. I, uh, but I don't, I don't get that last point though. So if they're trying to kill us off, but also trying to repopulate, using a different country how does how does that make sense um well no the, the, the people they're bringing in produce children and we're not yeah but i you thought know? they were trying to i thought they're trying to get the population down they are but these people are um, um, in in theory are easier to control we're, so we were a little bit more uppity but i know it's a, it's an odd one but if you The plan was always, if you ever look back to this, the idea of, of Europa, which is the, you know, the Kalergi plan, as it's called, was to, they wanted to, de they wanted to create a European state. So the way they wanted to do it was to remove people's national identities. Yeah. So if you have roots and common history and identity, that needs to, that needs to be gotten rid of. So you, you, you fracture it by bringing lots of people in who, who don't share that. And then you mix it up and then it becomes this other thing. And then people are more disparate in little groups. Yeah. So we do, right. if you have a country that's all one group of people, they're far more unified. You know? So it's, be it's better, it's better for kind of rulers to uh, have a kind of homogenized dilute sort of lots that of different was, cultures. The prediction, the prediction that Kalergi made was that the, the, the um, population of Europe at some point would basically be kind of like a coffee colored hue that was that was the that was that was that was the prediction whether that happens or not is, is to be seen but that's you know and do you think that the idea is to remove people's identity you know yeah because i see uh i don't really look at the bbc anymore unless i'm like just every now and then i'll see what's going on on it and uh it seems very strange in terms of it's always pushing trans rights it's always pushing um Black Lives Matter, and it's always pushing kind of anything which is like men being um, sort of harassing women or something. It will get in there. So it's kind of like anti-male. It's kind of it's it's all very divisive, isn't it? But do you think there's somebody who's work, who's work, so you saying there's somebody working at the BBC who who understands the big picture of where that's going and it's moving towards a, a, like a more divisive society. It's difficult with stuff like that because everything works on com compartmentalization, doesn't it? Little groups of people. If you work in a big company, 
and the person at the top decides this is what we're going to do. You, that's how these layers of management work, right? So you, you, the person at the top says we do this and these people enforce it and they keep their jobs and these people enforce it and it goes down and down and down, you know? And that seems to be, and, and if you look around a lot of the articles that are coming out, a lot of the companies that are doing this, there's a lot of pushback because it's not the majority view. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You'll, you'll get, the, they're pushing all the woke stuff. And generally most people are like, we don't want to know. Mm. We don't think like that. I'm not sure. That, um, I mean, it seems like a, there's a hell of a lot of people who, who, who are supporting that, that woke um, politically correct stuff a lot on Facebook. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> who, who is who? Somebody did a really wonderful montage of about 50 different separate Facebook accounts where they'd all put the same paragraph. It was obviously a COVID. I think we should have stronger restrictions and blah, blah, blah. But it was word for word for word, you know. There's a wonderful video of local news stations in America. At the end, you have the two anchors, the male and the female, and they're standing in front of the big screen. And then now we need to talk about misinformation. And there's a lot of it around and blah, 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 blah. And they start to put all these TV stations up, right? And they're all saying the same script, all of them. All of yeah. them. It's like a hundred. Yeah, yeah. On and on and on. And they go, duh, duh, duh. this is this is a threat to our, threat to our democracy and blah. And you know it's bollocks. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think, I think somebody you, gives I, a script. I think you sent me that. It was, like, op, was it Operation uh it could be the Operation Mockingbird. 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 That, that was it. Mockingbird. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about the trouble and trying to be responsible, one-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Um, there was a really good example when they were trying to justify the invasion in Iraq. The Canadian prime minister at the time made a speech about why it was necessary and we have to defend freedom and blah, 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 blah. And they put it side by side with the Australian prime minister who's reading the same script. Right, right. Yeah. It's like build back word, better. Build, word build. for word. And the only difference is in Australia. No, 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 this is much older. This is about, when's the Iraq War, 20 years ago? Yeah, I'm just saying it's, 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 similar, it's similar to that is what I meant. Yes, yes, Build Back Better, which is apparently 666, isn't it, right? Is that right? Somebody says yeah, it could well, could well be, yeah, yeah. could well be. Yeah. But they keep, yeah, they use the mantra. It's like the New World Order one. So on September the 11th, 1991, uh, George Bush Sr. made a speech where he's the first person, I think, to mention it. Where he said we can see a new world coming into view, a new world order. Yeah, right? yeah. So ten years to the day after is nine eleven. Ten yep. years to the day. Ten years to the day. So now, you, you think they had it planned that whole time? Now, yeah. Oh yeah. If, if and if you they, I believe his family were part of the funders for the building of the twin towers in the first place. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture I've seen, which is amazing, of the sun. It's a sunset, but the sun's coming through the building, and one of those buildings had 100 empty floors in it. it they're literally empty. So the building was designed not to be really used as offices, but it was designed for its final destruction. Yeah. Now, oh. so 9-11 is almost 20 years 
years ago. So this September the 11th is going to be a big date for these people. These people, they like their numerology. That's right. their problem. They love numbers. And because people have figured out that they like their symbology, you know, 9-11, 7-7, you know, all of these little things, it adds up. Everything has to add up to something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I I definitely believe that to be true now because I've seen so much of it. Like, um, like I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who died, who was 99, um, the, the prince. Philip. So he, it, it was. Yeah, a, he's, he's not- it was a 99th day of the year, wasn't it? And he was 99. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen it. I've seen and it a lot. And he died on the 9th. And he died on the 9th, wasn't it? It was the 9th of May. I think it might have been the 9th of April. I have to check that. But, the man, uh, the man who, 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 when he was asked if he, if resurrection, if it was, if reincarnation was real, what would you like to come back as? So it's a, it's a real quote. He said, I want to come back as a virus to kill as many people as possible. Right. Okay. And somebody recently put a clip up, or not a clip, but an explanation of what they said virus is actually a poisonous substance. Well, people are kind of having that put in their arm now, aren't they? So he might get his wish. So what do you think is in the, in, in the jobs, uh, if you could sum it up in a, <laughs> you know, well, the, a few the paragraphs? Yeah, no, I... I read or I listened to somebody talk recently about what some some nurses who've been administering them saying that when they get the vials in a box, they're not all the same color even. Right. Yeah. This is why they're giving you this card. So they give you the thing. Oh, we gave Tommy that one with that stuff in it. I wonder what will happen to him. Right. And that's it is a, it is an experiment. They're trying to find. I wonder what happened to that person. And this one and that one and that one and is it going to affect it now i've been told people i know they've got friends who when they've taken say the um the pfizer they then they they become a different person their mood lowers they become mm. less effervescent like they normally are uh-huh. um the two two of the bosses where i volunteer one of them who had covid got the astrazeneca and was hospitalized with a blood clot on the brain and she had COVID. The other one had heart palpitations, and she's only 40. Mm-hmm. Um, I know of three males in their 50s who've died of heart attacks after having vaccine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I still don't know anybody who's who within 28 days or after testing positive mm-hmm. with COVID, mm-hmm. not from, with, and that's where the language comes in. Yeah. You listen to the BBC and you listen to them saying that somebody died with COVID. You know, yeah. Tommy went to bed with his hat on. It doesn't mean he's, yeah. it, that's the thing that does it's, it. And it's, 30, it's the language 30, people 30 don't, days they don't of listen a, to. It. 30 days of a positive test. 28 yeah. Within 28 days, like the film. Oh, 28 days later. 28 days later, the zombie yeah. film, right? Well, and then what's not... the second one? What's the second? And what's the second one called? 28 weeks later. And what, what, why does that matter? 28 weeks later. After the second injection is when you start to go a bit odd, you know. So uh, the uh, the Pfizer jab, you said it, it might make people a bit what, more docile, did you say? Well, the, I believe when they had to stop the first test with the AstraZeneca, with, when they were testing those nurses, the woman said, she said, you've killed God. I can't feel God in me anymore. Uh, and there is a quote from, what's this guy's name? Is it Rudolf Steiner? said that in the future they were going to try and get rid of people's spirituality. Um, and the quotes, I don't know, 80 years old, I think, 100 years ago. So if there is something inside you that's like that, that, that could be a thing. I don't know if you know that the, the, the part of the brain where when people who have epilepsy, when they measure it, it's in, ironically, your temple, right? Your temple. And that's also the place they believe where people have spiritual experiences or religious experiences. Oh, in the, the same temple. Center, same place. That, uh, yes, that's why it's right. called your temple, dude. Wow. Hello. Yeah. Right. It's the words are there, but you never think about it. No. Um, you never think. You never think about it. Hello? But um, uh, that thing about taking away your spirituality. I mean, I've uh, I've spoken to a few people who uh, have taken the job, and they actually they seem just the same. So. Yeah, I, like I say, who knows what they're giving to people, right? They, you know, maybe some people are getting placebos. Um, like, what are you on crack there? <laughs> Just a bit of weed. 
Um, <laughs> nice. I want to see him break down the door now. You, you get famous on TikTok. <laughs> see, oh, hey, man, what are you... Famous on bitch. For, man? Famous on bitch shoot, anyway. Bitch. Um, bit shoot or bit slap. Um, and um, yeah, I had to go on bit shoot because um, I I added two videos to, to a new YouTube channel called Tommy Cole Podcast, and they both got removed. Yeah. So I, I just thought. No, um, I, I mean, we've all had. I've I I think it was one of your videos where I shared or something like that, and then they said, "Oh, there's incorrect information." But look, it, it, anybody who believes the idea of fact checkers, who's paying the fact checkers? Mm. You know, for a long time, people, if you put something up on Facebook, that some if I was having a row with a friend of mine about some some conspiracy thing, whatever it is, they would go on. They would go and get the Snopes fact check. Yeah. This yeah. Website. Snopes, right. Snopes turned out to be some bloke whose wife had left him a hooker and a and a, and a stripper and one PC. That was Snopes. Yeah. Right. And this this guy had all this picture. Now I put a piece up recently. One of the guys that invented Wikipedia said you can't trust it anymore, and he invented it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's, he, fun, you know, it's funny because um, have said that he might. Uh, so I, I'm 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 um, noticing. Um, I'm, see, in my head, I'm trying to get my head around why people um, are not seeing it. Right. Uh, and I've, I've noticed like a few like close friends. Right who are very, like, say, smart and also empathetic and just, you know, they're not, they're not, you couldn't really call them sheep under, under any, you know, the way they live their life. Do you know what I mean? But they, what they do is they, they, they cite, um, yeah. they cite right. stuff like, um, uh, oh, uh, it says it in the World Health Organization Medical Journal or something as proof. And 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 apparently, like you, you should be able to rely on that more than YouTube videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was going to say is that you've got to remember that you know that the behavioural scientists behind this knew what they were doing. So when you put these people into lockdown at the end, and it's still it was still winter when that happened, it's very traumatic for people. Mm. I know of one or two suicides. I know that friends of mine. And I'm, I include myself, but a lot of people went through some very dark times. Now mm. I go through that, and I know what the fuck's going on. Do you know mm. what I mean? I'm, I'm one of the people who's been trying to tell people about this, and I'm still like, oh, man, they've done this, and they're going to do that. And then, then you have to kind of go, hold on, hold on, get a grip. Don't be, you know. So what are other people going through? They're not going to talk about it, mm. you know. The, the, the ego and self-preservation is really strong motivation, especially if you haven't been told about the place you live and your history and what's, what, what's real and what's not. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, people are going to do that because they they have the idea in their head that you know they're probably never going to die, but that's not the case. Mm. You know, and a lot of people are going to have really traumatic time if the amount of people pass that they think are going to pass. Mm. You know, if people start dropping down in their tens of thousands, it's 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 oh not okay, but it, it's all very well losing one or two people every few years right you lose a relative or maybe a, a, i don't know if you've got any of your contemporary friends you grew up with if anyone's passed away you know no. you, right. as you go along in life people monthly basis mm -hmm. that's that's going to because people don't have like you're saying about surviving not being able to, to grow food or whatever people don't have the mental tools to deal mm -hmm. with you know? mm -hmm. And it makes your brain do different things. When they, when they, the fact that they're using these trauma-based techniques, mm -hmm. which is what this is about now, where we're being let out for the summer, and then they're going to come back in and go bang, mm -hmm. right? Is that's that's how you get people to give up? To give up? Mm. You know, there's a great joke. I don't know if you've seen it or the meme that somebody said, "What's the difference between a conspiracy theory and reality?" Six months, I believe. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've noticed I've noticed that um, well, there's a few things going on. First of all, I, I need I need to stop uh, uh, getting angry with people because I, that never ever ever helps. Um, I, I it always it always is better if I kind of try and take their perspective as much as I can. That mm. even though like I find that really hard to do, um, but I need to practice that now because uh, just getting. I've, got, I've gone through a few like arguments sort of with people and it doesn't really help because 
I get more entrenched in my ego and then they get more entrenched in theirs. And yeah, I like the thing is I know I'm right, but I, I've got, to, I've got to stop doing that thing of I I'm right here because it just makes the other person go, no, you, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> just, just put me in your will then. <laughs> it's, um, put me in your, I tell you, I'll tell you an interesting one. Actually, I think I was telling somebody else, the charity shop that I volunteer in, um, let me show you some, where is it? Something that turned up recently. How come they don't pay you, mate? How come you have to, how come you have to do it for free? Volunteering? Well, some people work there get paid. Well, you're, you're about to see why I don't get paid. Um, you, is, hold on. you steal all the books. You don't steal all, oh, I've got some killer books, man. I've got some wonderful stuff, actually. And, and that's the thing. Books are also interesting because you, you, you get stuff from a long time ago. I've got somewhere, it's a friend of mine, it's the 1970 Reader's Digest Compendium of British Folklore. And it's a black-covered book with a black bull's face on it. It's all about everywhere in England, ghosts and fairies and sightings and whatever. So people, people think that crop circles are new, but they're not. They had crop circles 500 years ago, but nobody could see them from above. So they didn't know what they were. So they told people it was the devil. So uh, what, what, what are crop circles? Uh, in theory, they're interdimensional messages. So okay. you view them from, I mean, there are some really, really complex ones. Bill Hicks used to do a piece about that when he said, they said, you know, that they found, he said, he said, they said most crop circles are made by uh, guys. These two guys in England do it with a, with a bit of wood. He goes, but I think they're aliens as well. So, which is funny. You can laugh there. Hold on, where was I? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I wanted to show you something because it isn't. <laughs> Where are we? A bit of latency on the line, that's why. That's okay. Right, there you go. That's okay. a nice old copy of Abbey Road that Where got donated. Robert? People don't donate Beatles albums, Tommy. Mm. So, uh... people don't donate them unless, unless the person clearing out doesn't care, you know, and we're getting stuff coming through that clearly lots of people are dying when you work in a charity shop you see you get donations oh, from businesses right. you get people who are moving you get people who are clearing out you get students this time of year a lot of students they finish their degree they're leaving london they they just get all the gut and, and put it in the charity shop but suddenly we're getting bob dylan albums and beatles albums so people who are about 70 right uh, and books tons and tons of books tons of them you know and and boxes of candles we had with with the price sticker of 39 and a half pence right that dates it so you get in you get this wave of stuff coming through you know very interesting because it it, it, it it it's like a microcosm of how the country's working oh you're saying that that's an indicator to you that the people are dying People of a certain age, for sure, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. the I... fact that the, the, usually people, uh, in, families of people, when they get, because I do all the music stuff, you'll get asked, "Oh, have you got any? Have you got any? Uh, you know, uh, Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin CDs?" And you laugh because nobody gets rid of that stuff. All right? If you want, if you go to a charity shop, you can find, you can guarantee to find probably that Dido album and a Robbie Williams album, or all of the Robbie Williams albums, right? Because people get to a certain point, and they go, "Nah." And they get rid of it, right? But they don't, nobody gets rid of the classic stuff. But mm. now these things are turning up, you know? Mm -hmm. Something like a whole load of Bob Dylan albums, but people are after those things. But Beatles on vinyl, mm. you're like, what? Mm. It's crazy. I mean, I have three copies of the same album in one week. So oh. you, can, you can see the patterns. But the point is you, that all of these things are not getting into the media, right? Some I see a lot of comments on on videos on YouTube and BitChute. If you watch something and then you look at the comments, mm. and people will chip in with with like additional links or interesting stuff. Where you go, oh, okay, and you look at that, and uh, that ha that's how I sent those links to you. you the, the, right, you, you get these little bits and pieces, and people are talking about hearing and seeing a lot of ambulances. Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah. Now this, yeah. Now that was uh, uh, very early on. There was low. There was loads of that going on where they were just going around putting the thing on to scare people. That was yeah. the original thing. Right. Was, you know, oh, guys, people are dying. You know, but they're not. You know. 
Yeah, I, I've, de- I've definitely. So started... now people are saying that. You... So the thing is, how how long can they suppress that? Even if you're the most, even if you take the vaccine, if you start seeing people around you dropping, right? You've got mm-hmm. to. You, somebody has to notice that at some point or start talking about it. You can't. They can't all internalize it. Some people are going to get angry. You know? When they realise that they they probably only have two or three years left, they're going to get angry. And when do you, when do you think that will be? Or do you just accept it and you know? I don't know. Well, people uh, people are. I've watched some footage from France. That's quite interesting. There's you know a lot of people getting very ticked off there now. You know, some protests in other places, Australia, Poland. It varies. It varies. I you know it's a who knows, you know, different people have got different versions of, I watched another guy talking about it saying, oh, it can never happen. They can never get away with it. You know, well, well, you know, they've got the technology, you know, that's the thing. People, like I say, people think that the, the up-to-date technology they've been shown is the, is the cutting edge. And it's not, it's not, it's at least 20 years behind you know? and probably more. And, and that's the point. People have been trying to do scientific stuff of a high level for at least a hundred years, at least, you know, I've read a stuff about Tesla because Tesla in theory was, was inventing something new sort of every week. Yeah? And you're like, no one's that clever. But then you find out apparently Tesla's father worked at the Vatican library. And that makes more sense because they've got all the books that have been confiscated. That's got the real information about history. You know, so someone was trying they to- do have a lot. Someone at that st- uh, stand in the park event was tr- was trying to tell me about Tesla um, and how he was ripped off or something. Is that that's the, that's the common belief? Is that he, yeah? When he when they were trying to do wireless transmissions across the Atlantic, he was funded by J.P. Morgan, and he built a tower in a place called Wardenclyffe. It's like a vertical tower with like a mushroom on the top. Looks a bit like Jeff Bezos's rocket, right? Old right. cop man, right? And he built this tower and then he went to JP Morgan and he said, with this tower, I think he tricked him. The, the, the story is he, he knew what he was building, but he got the funding. And he said, with this machine, anyone can, t- we can send energy into the ether and anyone in their house with a device can pick it up for free. Oh, it can be right. free energy for everyone. Right, okay. And this guy sort of went, no, that's not how we do things. You're, you're done. And then they meant, then he kind of blackballed him. They destroyed his career. He has to live in a hotel and ends up in poverty. And they've got all of his designs. And, you know, the other famous one being um, the Philadelphia experiment. You just you broke up during that because the Internet went unsta- unstable. But that, that was the, you call it the Philadelphia what? The Philadelphia ex- experiment. It was done in the 40s, I believe, with a ship where they wanted to make it invisible to radar. And he got this. He invented they'd had some technology from Tesla. And they set this thing up and the ship disappeared, literally disappeared. That's the, that's the story, right? It literally disappears. And when it comes back, members of the crew who'd, who had moved because they were what they didn't know where they were had become fused with the deck. Like people were sticking out halfway or their face was stuck inside the metal, literally inside it. Very, mm-hmm. very strange. And odd so what, occurrence. What, why do you think that happened? It, it, could, well, in theory, this thing went through time. This this machine passed through time. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I'll have to ch- I'll have to check that out on uh, on YouTube another if time. You, another, another good sideways example of that is what they call a time slip, and there's very well documented cases um, where people pass through time. There's a very famous one in the late '90s. I read it on the inside of a rave album for some reason. I don't know why they put it there. Uh, uh, a, a policeman in Liverpool in about 1996 was out with his wife shopping. She said, I want to go to this such and such dress shop. He said, I want to go to HMB. They, he said, I'll go around such and street and I'll meet you in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. He, as he goes around the corner, he, he almost gets run over by a van. And when he looked at the, the street, it was cobbles. And when he looked around him, everybody was wearing 1940s clothing or 1950s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he saw one girl dressed in 90s clo- modern clothing going into a shop and he went towards where she was. She comes out of the shop and he said, are you OK? And she said, yeah, I thought it was a 
was a was a, a boutique and when i went in there it was something else and then suddenly they were back in the modern day and when it turned out the shot that she'd seen was that that was there in the 50s and it, it's it was all over liverpool people were phoning up the police they'd lost time people had i was doing such and such and it was one o'clock and then it was four o'clock and there's quite a few examples around the world over the last hundred years of people having this is, is, experience called a time. Is, is that example you described is on YouTube somewhere? Uh, there is. The, you can find the story of it. Yeah. yeah. What's it, what's it called? It, a time slip. Uh, if you put time slip Liverpool, you'll find it. Time slip Liverpool. Liverpool. The following story is an account of a man who experienced one of these time slips in July 1996 in Liverpool city centre. Frank an off-duty policeman from Melling and his wife Carol were in Liverpool one Saturday afternoon shopping. At Central Station the couple split up. Carol went to Dylan's bookshop in Bold Street to purchase a copy of Irvine Welch's book Train Spotting, and Frank went to a record store in Ranley Street to look for a CD. About 20 minutes later he walked up the incline next to the Lyceum which leads out onto Bold Street intending to meet up with his wife in the bookshop when he suddenly noticed he had somehow entered what he called an oasis of quietness. Everything was deadly quiet. And then suddenly a small box fan that looked like something out of the 1950s sped across his path, beeping as it narrowly missed him. And Frank noted that the van had the name Kaplan's emblazoned on its side. When the policeman looked down, he noticed that he was standing in the road and immediately thought, this was strange because the last time he'd been at the bottom of Bold Street it had been pedestrianised. Frank crossed the road and he saw that Dylan's bookshop was no longer there. In its place stood a store with the name Crips over its two entrances. The policeman was understandably confused. He looked in the window of Crips and he saw no books on display but women's handbags and shoes. The policeman turned around and he saw that the people were wearing clothes that would have been worn in the 1940s and the 1950s and this really unnerved him. He realised that he had somehow walked into the Bold Streets of 40 odd years ago. Or I'll try and find a link. There's a very famous one of a, 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 a two English couples who were holidaying in France and they were driving. They drove into France. They found a place to stop in a hotel. Beautiful place. Had food, chatted to people. And the next morning when they, they left, went to Spain and they said on the way back we'll stay there again that was really nice and when they went there it was derelict the hotel was derelict and someone said nobody's used that since the war and they stayed there for a day so there's quite a few examples of really odd things to do time, with time. slips like gl yeah. glitches in the matrix um not so much a glitch it could be I mean you get lots of things like that you know I mean, I, so I always go by people will tell you things, right? Let's say I've, I've never seen what you would call a ghost. I don't have you. Uh, no, no. Do you know anybody who's told you that they have? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you believe them? Uh, yeah. As much, as much as I could. But, okay. yeah. So it would be, it would be, you can kind of believe them if you trust them, but if it happened to you, then you could say for sure, couldn't you? Right? Mm, yeah. Okay. Is it possible to see the future? I mean, I, I, I guess anything's possible, but I, I don't, I don't feel it in my, in my, in my reality. It happened to me. Right. Okay. Right. Quite a few years ago, I was I, I, the acu woman I used to get acupuncture from. We talked about uh, right brain activity, so you know about left brain is about time and linear. The right brain is about creativity and being in the now, right? Okay. So the education system, the education system makes you focus on the left brain. So you're always so you're always worried about the future, right? Okay. And rather than enjoying today, which is what's going on now. And I asked her, I wanted to have what's called lucid dreams, and a lucid dream is where things are solid. You can still do, do crazy stuff in a dream, but the dream becomes almost re you can feel wind or rain or cold awesome. or whatever. It's really and colourful, really colourful, but they call it lucid dreaming. So you want you and wanted she, to do she, lucid dreaming, so you asked this person for me. Yes, yeah, and she did a certain thing to me, and it worked. A couple of days later, I had my first lucid dream, very far out. I won't do it now because it's well, anyway. But she did something to me. I kept having this treatment, and at one point, she did something to me, 
and I went out one day to post something. And as I did, in my mind, I could see in the main road, which I hadn't got to yet, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine from years ago, I could see his mother, but she was older and wearing a purple jumper. And I walked to the post office. I did what I had to do. And as I came back, I could see her in the crowd, in the street. She's coming towards me. And so I said, oh, how are you doing? And she's only come to the area for one day to buy something. But she was exactly as I'd seen it 15 minutes before. And I asked the acupuncturist, I said, why did that happen to me? She said, because I opened your system up to more signals. Can you just, can you just so repeat I saw, that? But it was a mundane of, yeah. So I had acupuncture for lucid dreaming. But because this, she'd done something to open up my senses more. Right. Yeah, I saw that I saw something happen before it happened. So I saw my friend's mum walking down the street in my mind. Right. I went to the post office and when I came back, she was walking down the street towards me. Right. And she was the way I saw her in this vision. I hadn't seen her for 10 years. Her hair had gone gray and she had a purple jumper. on. So, so I know it's possible to see into the future somewhere. Right. Um, and w when you saw that, that vision, did it freak you mm. out or was it just normal? Uh, no, it freaked me out a bit. I didn't tell her that. I didn't tell her that. But that's it's one of those things that, that happens. I mean, the other example I give people is I had a recurring dream for about three years. Same dream. And it was always that in my area, I would see a young black guy drop his wallet and I would get it and give it back to him. That was the dream. That lies okay. well. No, no, not then. No, no, no. Doll, doll money matters. So um, I was get, when I was, I was at some job thing, and as I came out into the side street, this young guy walked along. He was walking along, and he stopped. And he looked at his watch, realizes he's late for something. He starts running, and his wallet, he had track pants on, and the wallet jumped in the air and onto the ground. And I was oh. like, this is it. And this woman said, that young man's dropped his wallet. I said, I know, and I'm giving it back to him picked oh. up the wallet and started chasing this guy. And right. it was really funny in the end because he had headphones and he couldn't hear me, right? So right. you've got semi-middle-aged white man with a wallet chasing a young black guy going, come back, come back. And he, he stopped at the job center. I stopped him and gave him the wallet. He said, oh, cheers, man. And I said, look, you know, look after your stuff. Never had the dream again. But that was three years I had that dream. Right. That means it's an echo. It's like an echo coming back. But why and why is, is there something significant about you giving that guy the wallet? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe after that, it's really important to him. I don't know. He was, he was, he was going to the job center. So he's jobless and these wallets got everything in it. So clearly if he, if he doesn't get that wallet, he's going to be in some kind of stuck, you know? Oh, isn't it? You know, I did have one exp uh, one experience that was quite what you call synchronicity. Yeah. Uh, so I, I remember I, I went to, I went, I went to Manchester uni. But I also, I, li I lived in London for a long time. Uh, and when I was at uni, there was about, I'd say there was about like two girls I fancied at uni, right? Okay. And, and, and when, and, and yeah. like, when I went, it may be more, but like, there, I remember that there, there were, those were t in Manchester, I remember those two being like ones in my head, right? And then when I went to London, I, I went to meet one of them as a friend. And when I got there, the other one was standing at the bar. And but they were from completely, you know, they were from completely different um, cities, and they, you know, this 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 other girl actually. She just from, happened to be there. Yeah, the other girl was actually from Ireland, I think, and she was just in London for a few days. But I met up with, you know, and you know, it's it was just I I couldn't explain that to anyone except for myself because uh, it doesn't sound like that much of a coincidence, but at the time it felt it's strange. It was. It felt like some kind of a glitch in the it's, matrix. It's not, it's not. Yeah. It's not so much. Some things are like a glitch, but some things are. Uh, I don't know. How I say not. Not glitch. That's, that that not, makes it kind it's of. It's more negative. of a. It's more of a. It's not that you made it happen as such. It's you get these. You do get these very odd. Excuse me. I've had it before where you've got to do something, and if you if you turn. Okay. Here's the here's the example, and this did freak me out at the time. So I'm going back a long way. Very short story. 1988, working at, at, at Selfridges in Our Price, met an Australian girl, started a relationship. She went back to Australia. 1989, I follow. 
I spend a year there. You, you um, spend a year in Australia? We go, yeah, we go to Japan for a holiday. She goes back. I come back. Uh, she dumps me. That's a whole other st- <laughs> the, 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 the story. Um, her sister worked for Qantas on long haul flights, which is ca- kind of how she got it with a cheap flight. Yeah. But for two years, she didn't do that. Two years later, I'm working in a record shop, and uh, my boss at the time, that the Mr. CD guy, uh, he, he, the, the banks were, were, there was a big, that was when the big recession was, 91. 91, 90, yeah, 91, 92. And so we ended up, because he couldn't pay record companies money, we had to use record tokens, which was the old thing, we used to give record tokens. We used those to go and buy stuff, yeah? So I went to the HMV that's at Bond Street Station. I think it's still there the famous one, I go in, I buy the stuff that we're trying to get for customers off this list. I look around for myself for some stuff. And then at a certain point in my head, I just, my brain just said, no, it's time to leave. Right. As I turn around, this girl, her sister is walking past the door. Right. Okay. Now there's a lot of people in London. She's walking past the door. And mm. when people talk about fate and you having your own, you can make a decision, right? As I saw her, I, I realized I've got a choice now. I've got a choice. Mm. I either let her carry on walking into the crowd and I'll never see her again, or I go and speak to her. Right, right, right. right. I go up, I follow her, say, hey, hey, Virginia, how are you doing? This girl's face went white because I realized afterwards when she decided to come to London, and this was her first trip after two years, she must have said jokingly to her sister, oh, yeah, I bet I meet Alan. Right. There's eight million people in the city and she's walking down the street and I'm boom. There he is. Right. Right. Come on, man. That's not that's just odd. Right. 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 So but why do you think that? Why do you think that happened? I don't know. The, the universe, for some reason, will present you with opportunities. It's what you do with it. But you but you took the, you yeah. took the opportunity, but you didn't get back together with her. right? No, no, no. This was her sister. This was not the girl. This is her sister. It was the sister that worked for Qantas, her older sister. Right, right. I, but, she used but, to do long haul flights, and I'd, I'd met her here. I met her in Australia. Then she stopped doing it for two years. So the point there is, that, you know, the oh, she's the first time going back to London. It's like you go into that bar to meet that girl, and the other girl is standing there. Mm-hmm. If I asked you beforehand, do you think you'll meet Jennifer there? You'd go, no, it's ridiculous. It couldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it but, happens, and you but, get these get these moments that are just really odd yeah but they're not that uh you said you saw an opportunity and took it but that the opportunity yeah. did, did it lead to you going out with the other sister or something no 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 it was oh, purely right. to have a conversation with her okay I, so, so, so knew, some... knew it, I, knew, I knew it would freak her out and and of course she will tell her sister when she gets back and it'll piss her off because yeah i met him and he's okay sorry if you're <laughs> watching the law oh sorry it wasn't a good breakup then. No, no, she was a no. She was a, she was a no. What, what, it wasn't a breakup. It was a dumping. Mm. It was a dumping. It was a dumping by somebody who wasn't honest. And I right. discovered that after. That's a long story. I do it on here, but it, it's a, a, that kind of stuff when you go, oh, okay, you know, you know, dodge a bullet. Dodge. I'm trying to think of something else to happen like that. Yeah. So uh, the other good example, actually, uh, when I was in Australia, the guy that she ended up being with, he had a band. And they 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 were school. Him and this girl, her and the guy that she was with, and I ended up doing lights for them in little pubs when they had a light board. So you want to have a go at that just to make it a bit more interesting? Yeah, okay. So I come back to England about four weeks after I got back. There was a TV show uh, about the music scene in Sydney, right? In Sydney, and how good it was, which was not true. It's Melbourne, isn't it? yeah melbourne always was the city for the most bands actually yeah they they, they say we're going on oh, the, the scene in on a saturday night in sydney you can see loads of bands and they have a camera and it's outside the venue i used to do the lights in right then they have a shot of the band and the band where they're filming it from is where i used to stand yes right. it's literally where i used to stand and you're like i was doing that two months ago and now it's on tv here that's insane mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if, if, if I stuff. sometimes, um, like, uh, I used to do this thing where they you uh, you do it's called morning pages where you write down just stream of consciousness, like for half an hour every morning. 
and okay. um, you, you meant and it also it kind of you, you're supposed to write down stuff like synchronicities in there. And when I started to write them down, there's, they yeah. actually ha- they, ha- they happen. They 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 but they happen they happen a lot more. Little synchronicities happen a lot more often than you realize. Like they might even happen like weekly. But you just at the, at the time you don't, re- or, or me- maybe at least monthly. There is, um, yeah, no, there, I mean, there, there's um, one of the guys that you should listen to is long gone, sadly. He's called Robert Anton Wilson, very famous writer. Oh, yeah, funny. I've heard of him, yeah. Right, okay. He does a piece about Carl Jung when Jung had these students. So Freud is the fake, for, you know, um, Sigmund Freud is the dodgy one, and Carl Jung is the guy that's on it. And he used to talk, he did something about that in one of his classes. And the, the, the people in the classes started seeing, having more synchronicities things happen to them. It was, es- it was escalated. It was getting worse and worse. And apparently one of the students had come to, you know, Mr. Young, Mr. Professor Young, what can we do? What, what's happening? Why is this happening? He goes, don't worry. It's just demons. Demons. But you get stuff like that. If you, yeah. Demons. It was a joke. It's a joke, but it's yeah. like, you know, Oh. Well, how do you separate the inside from the outside? Well, that is one of the difficulties. That's why people get embroiled in weirdities while they're reading my books, because I'm dissolving the difference between the inside and the outside. Like most people think their head is inside the universe, but I have demonstrated in several of my books that uh, the universe is inside our heads. Our head is outside the universe. Uh, like... Um, this whole studio, for instance, it's, it's got to be inside my head or I wouldn't be aware of it. I've got a model of it inside my head. Mm-hmm. Now, inside that model of the studio is a model of me. And on top of the model of me is a model of my head. But that's not my real head. My real head contains the studio and my body and this model of a head. And it's the same with the whole universe. The, the whole universe is a model contained in my head, which contains a model of my head. So I've got two heads, the head outside the universe and the head inside the universe.